Let's see here. We, I think we're live again. Um, we have no idea what we've just done. We just pushed every button in the building and um, tried to maneuver things around. It worries me that we've been doing this so long that it doesn't worry me anymore. I'm not even sure what that means. But anyway, going to give folks another couple minutes where uh, that's 7.12 p.m., I believe. Um, so <clears throat> we had several people online, and then they started dropping off um, because the screen froze. So apparently having some kind of technical difficulties with the Internet service, but it just kind of came back on after we rebooted, so I'm not sure um, if we will be a, a solid um, service tonight, or you, we may drop you again. There's a few folks back watching, looks like five people tell them to type oh, somebody type us a message on there there deb ninus we're back on um let's see what else can somebody that's watching can you send us a message we're watching we're monitoring it right now before i begin if can you hear us okay and uh, is there an image am i moving um can you see what's going on here uh, anybody can you see me now? Can you see me with my bank robber mask? And there's Connie uh, Whitson. Hi, Miss Connie. Anybody else? There's. It says we've got 15 people watching. Can you all hear us? Give us some some thumbs up, some uh, comments, something on there. Kimberly, you were watching a moment ago. My bride, send me a message if you are on there. Uh, Kimberly it's you all can hear okay and there's Cindy Smith back on there you go uh, I don't know if you all may have to re um, uh, reconnect or what as well but it's the problem is on our end it is not on your end so I'll give you just another second there's a whole bunch of them just popped up there uh, maybe we got the screen so uh, we'll we appreciate that um, the Bible says, Philippians 4, verse 6, I've used this several passages, passages in the last 18 weeks. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Well, today is one of those days when we really need to practice what we preach. Uh, don't be anxious about anything. Did I lose it again? Uh, Facebook kicked you off because you didn't have your mask on. Yeah, that could be true. I don't know. Mayor Bradshaw posted a letter a couple of days ago that Loudoun County was not required to wear masks. It was you could if you chose to, but he didn't make it a countywide mandate. So um, uh, we need to make sure we're, we're following Loudoun County rules, Bridget. Um, so anyway, uh, practice what we preach. Be anxious for nothing. We need to trust the Lord for everything and and. Uh, know that he is good and in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, thanking the Lord that your requests be made known to God. So tell God what our requests are. We're going to share those prayer requests in just a few minutes and I'm going to cut my Bible study in half because I've lost half my time here. Glad that you guys are still here. Uh, we'll try to still end on time. I was going to be um, in Gary, stop dancing back there. Uh, I was going to share with you about uh, 12 verses, and instead I'll share with you about 6. So uh, back into the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7. We ended, we closed up chapter 6 last, sun, last Wednesday night when we were talking about uh, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So I'm um, going to pick up right there, the immediately following that passage, uh, Jesus continues to teach, and he says a, uh, a familiar phrase to us. Again, the Sermon on the Mount is probably familiar to you. 
um, uh, to, to most of us that is. So we're going to um, uh, share just a, just a little bit of that. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible says, Judge not that you be not judged. And I want to pause right there for just a couple of minutes because uh, right now there is a, a bit of a, uh, and I saw it called yesterday, mask shaming somebody or not mask shaming somebody. And the idea behind that is for you to judge and be critical of someone else because they are or are not wearing a mask for um, the current pandemic and all that. I don't know what the answer is, to be honest with you. I carry a mask with me now all the time. I always, has, I always have one in my pocket if I'm not wearing it. If I'm in Knox County at any stores or uh, any any buildings, you have, you're required to wear a mask. Again, Anderson County uh, did not uh, come to that same conclusion, nor did Loudoun County from uh, Mayor Bradshaw's um, uh, message yesterday. So every county isn't doing exactly the same. The governor gave the mayors of the, the counties uh, permission to, to uh, make that decision for themselves instead of making an executive order. And it's just like I've seen several memes on, on Facebook and, and Instagram and um, various social medias in the last few weeks. There, the, the one thing that I'm, that I'm determining or realizing, I guess, is that we're not agreeing on hardly anything. I am very, very thankful for our church family um, to, to do what we're doing and, and for you guys being so supportive, so faithful to all that, that we've asked you to do. You have socially distanced in, the, in our worship services. If it's a, a parking lot drive-in service, you've responded well to that. The online services, the the face to face in in house worship services, and um, and you you're really doing well. I spoke with the director of the Loudoun County uh, Health Department yesterday. I'd been trying to get in touch with them. I left a message on Friday after our first two cases, or after one case actually on Friday when we knew that uh, uh, Daniel Pinkston had been uh, uh, had tested positive. And then we found out Saturday that, that Sarah had joined him in that. Uh, the rest of the Pinkston family, just for our first prayer request, the rest of the Pinkston family are all showing symptoms now except Natalie. Uh, Natalie's the 9-year-old or 10-year-old uh, in the house. All the rest of them have shown symptoms. They do not have their tests back yet, but we are assuming that they're probably all going uh, to have um the COVID-19 virus. So they're doing well, doing better each day. Daniel and Sarah, a couple of days ahead of the others, and they are feeling a little better, got through it. It appears that they've gotten through the, the more difficult time. So keep them in your prayers, and we'll share more about that. But after the, they were, uh, Daniel tested positive, I called the health department, told them that. So yesterday she called uh, me, uh, the, she the director of the Loudoun County Health Department. We had a conversation about what we're doing. And she was very, very complimentary of you and of our church, the church staff, and how we were handling everything from the, the, the pace that we're going, uh, you doing some services online, keeping online services, but also the, the drive-in services, then social distancing now. She was so complimentary and thankful for what we were doing. She, she said, you're doing everything that you're being asked. We just really want to say thank you for that. Thank you for in, in for telling them that we had had a a, a positive test. But um, she she was just very complimentary of that. She had, would she wish that more churches would do that? Several churches, even in our area, uh, uh, have have met the whole time. They haven't uh, um, uh, gone online services. They haven't uh, moved to parking lot services or anything else. Several of our churches in Loudoun County uh, just continue to meet. You typically smaller uh, ser smaller churches. But even when they did that, there, there was a problem uh, that, that was uh, kind of finding its way to the surface. And um, I don't know. I'm not a medical professional, and I'm not a scientist. And the truth is, what we're finding is both the medical professionals and the scientists, they can't even agree with one another on this. So we don't know. What I do know is I'm trying to lead our church uh, to, to do the best we can, to be as safe as we can, and some folks just feel uncomfortable. Some folks want to wear masks. Some don't. So, and, and all of that stuff. What, what I'm saying is that we are, and we, sh we should be, 
uh, um, honoring one another and loving others above ourselves and, and, and trying to show that honor and respect and all of those things. So um, the, the thing we don't need to do is to, to be negative about it and to, to uh, make people feel bad or feel guilty or not wanting to come to church or whatever. Uh, we, are, we are free in Christ, but Paul said, even though I have all these freedoms, it's not necessarily good for me to exercise all these freedoms if it doesn't edify the body of Christ and build up the body and, and minister to others. And he's right, and that, that teaching is right. So we need to be careful about that. And, and here in, Matt, in, in Matthew's recording of the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus said, Judge not, that you be not judged, he's not necessarily speaking about a mask or wearing one or not wearing one, by the way. What he is speaking about is our tendency to, to judge other people in their sin and what they're doing in their life and what we think is good and what we think is bad. Well, ultimately, may I remind you that we are not the judge of anyone. That's not our responsibility. That's not our obligation. That's not our privilege. We are called to, to minister to other people, to love one another, to do those things. As teachers, as pastors and shepherds, we're called to help people to hear the word. The word of God will reprove and rebuke people and it will bring conviction upon others. And my job is certainly to inspect the flock and to make sure that we're in the, the, the best condition we can be. And when I find sin in the flock or in the life of an individual, we deal with that. Some I deal with personally. It's not a public matter. Some the Lord deals with that I'm not even aware of through the sermons that he impresses my heart to preach. So I don't know quite often when there's some issue you're dealing with or a sin you're dealing with, I just preach the gospel and then you'll say mess say things to me like, boy, that message was for me today. That one stepped on my toes or whatever, however you, you describe that or that, that uh, sensation, that realization when the Holy Spirit convicts you through his word of what's going on in your life. I didn't convict you of it. I don't know about it, but God does. So Jesus said to these, these um, people, uh, then again, there were probably a few thousand on this hillside listening to him. He was speaking directly to his disciples and to leaders, but others were hearing this. All the folks in that arena, if you will, on that mountainside heard it. So when he said, judge not, lest you be, that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So he says, don't judge each other because if you judge one another, you're going to be judged to the same standard. Now, most of the time, we will judge people on what we think we're doing well at. We will compare them to ourselves in some area that we have handled. For instance, for me, uh, again, uh, I, I have told you before, I've shared my testimony. I don't use foul language, curse words anymore. I, I don't do that. I, I stopped that literally 40 years ago. I just stopped, and after a while, there was a season when it was a, a struggle. I was having to fight against it, but then as I stopped using it, I put other words in, its, in, in the place of those foul words, and I learned to express myself more clearly. I just stopped cursing or stopped using curse words. When I did that, it, I didn't realize that it would, would become um, kind of my nature now, and somebody said, well, you mean if you smash your finger or something, you don't say a cuss word. One doesn't slip out, and the answer is no, it, it honestly doesn't. And it's not because I, I don't, it doesn't hurt me as much as it hurts you. It hurts exactly the same. But I just don't use that language. I've replaced that language. I've, I've moved it out of my heart. And so it doesn't come out of me anymore. Now, that's one particular sin. The Bible says don't use unwholesome speech. Don't curse. Don't use those kinds of words. I get it. So that's one sin that for this season in my life, for the past 40 years, I've been able to control. So if I'm going to judge me against you, what I'm going to judge is our cussing. Because I know I'm, I got that one kind of mastered right now, at least. So I, I and I'm not saying it couldn't come back. That I couldn't. So I'm not saying any of that. But I'm telling you, I, that's how we judge one another. And now I don't judge you about uh, gossiping because I like to gossip. You know what I mean? I don't judge you about. Um, uh, uh, telling lies because I like to lie. 
about uh, cheating somebody, about uh, uh, lusting over money or or power, or I don't judge on those. You know what I'm? You understand what I'm saying here? What Jesus said, "Don't don't judge, because whatever you judge with, you're going to be used the same measure. You're going to be judged with, not necessarily on the same things, but you're going to be judged with that same harshness, that same critical spirit. So if I hear someone cursing, I realize that's between them and God." The Bible tells them not to do it. So when I'm preaching and that topic comes up in the text, I present that if that brings conviction, so be it. That's not me judging you for that sin. That is the Word of God judging you, measuring you, and letting you know that that's something you need to stop. I say to folks all the time, there are some uh, sins that, that are sins to me that may not be a sin to you. It may be something that you're just dealing with. I, for instance, you may say that me drinking my diet Dr. Pepper is a sin because there's chemicals in that and it's just not good for you. And the truth is, there probably are some things, there probably is some truth to that. I have not yet felt conviction about it. I haven't felt like that's a sin to me. Now, if I do, then I have to then deal with my sin. So whatever it is, and if, if, I, if I, had the, I felt like I had the sin of overeating for, for several years, and I had to deal with it, and God finally convicted me about that, I just had to, had to face it and face Him and say, okay, God, I'm going to stop this. But nobody told me I was eating too much. Now, I may say to you, the sin of gluttony is a sin, but I didn't realize that that's what I was doing until God brought personal conviction in my life. So I didn't judge, I don't judge you because you're overweight or because you drink Coca-Cola or Diet Coke or any of those things, but any of those can become a sin. It doesn't have to be a bad thing to become a sin. It has to be something that we put in a bad place. We do it inappropriately. We use it inappropriately. We, we, um, all, all of that can be part of this. So Jesus simply said in this message, judge not lest you be judged. And he said, if you don't understand it, for with whatever judgment you judge other people, you will be judged, and with this, the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Verse 3 says, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Again, trying to put that into our terminologies. Jesus is using illustrations here. But he said, why would you, you look at somebody and see that they have some little thing that they're dealing with, Whatever it is, I don't know what it, what it might be that you see in their life and typically something you don't like. And so you begin to judge them. And at the same time, you have the, the practice, the ongoing practice of something else. And you don't see that in your life. You don't see that sin in your life. So he said, you're trying to reach and, and, and pick a little speck out of somebody's eye, trying to clear that up. In the meantime, you've got a plank and you've you got a board in your eye and you don't even see that. And in fact, it's so bad, so bad, you can't really see the speck through your plank. So uh, again, that's his illustration. I think there's some, some intended humor there as well. I don't think you could really have a plank in your eye. But, but uh, I think the idea here is sometimes we're nitpicking on somebody else because there's something in their life that we don't like. And so Jesus said, just be careful that you don't like it until I've convicted them of that. And it's not like some sin that is black and white in Scripture. The Bible says, thou shalt not lie, period. Okay? There's no question about it, no way to waver on that. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not uh, bear false witness against your brother. There's some things that Scripture is very clear on. Those other things, thou shalt not, not uh, uh, drink diet Dr. Pepper. doesn't say that in Scripture. So you have to allow the Lord to speak to your heart and bring conviction to you if that's something that you shouldn't be doing. But again, if He tells you you shouldn't be doing that, it's not necessarily a blanket sin. It's a it's a issue of you walking with with consistency in your life and with some measure of confidence toward Him and your willingness to be um, um, uh, somehow under His control. Okay, so uh, again, it may not be something uh, that that everybody else is is convicted about. So don't judge other people on all of that stuff. A mask is one of those things. You may have a strong conviction about that. I'm, I'm okay one way or another. I went to talk to the mayor uh, yesterday, went in, uh, had, a, had a meeting with him, and <clears throat> I walked in, and I knew he had made the, the, the proclamation or whatever the day before that Loudoun County would not require masks. He said, if you, if you go into a business and that business has a message on their door, you no, no mask, no service, that's up to that business. 
And if then you say, well, I'm not going to go in there if I have to wear a mask, that's your business. You don't need to judge one another. You just need to understand that's where we both stand. If they say you don't have to wear a mask and your convict conviction is that you do need to wear a mask, then you don't. You go in and they're, they're not wearing masks and you get mad. I'm not going to shop there anymore. That's your prerogative. You can do that too. It's okay. We just don't need to get all in a, in a big uh, frustra frustration and, and a, a fight over all of that stuff. We need to trust the Lord in what he's doing. Verse number four says, How can you say to your brother, Let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrites. Jesus calls us who are trying to do that hypocrites. Don't judge other people with, this, with your measuring stick. There is actually only one measuring stick. And if you want to do this, here's a, here's a pretty good litmus test for you. Uh, whatever you're doing, would Jesus do it? There's the only measurement that matters. Would Jesus do that? And you can know specifically what Jesus would do from the Scripture. He would follow everything in Scripture. The issue then outside of Scripture, such as my Diet Dr. Pepper illustration or last uh, Sunday night, Pastor Gary's M&M's, uh, whether you like peanut or, or plains or whichever uh, flavor, whatever that is for you, that's a personal conviction, personal taste, all of those kinds of things. So you, you can't find that in Scripture. Jesus says uh, sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. No, that's almond joy and mounds, okay? That's, that's not, so don't, don't kind of cross those things up. But you can read and find the, the nature of God. You can find the full character revelation of God. So then you can say, would God put this beverage in his system? Would Jesus drink this diet Dr. Pepper? Would he eat those nasty M&Ms with uh, some of those weird flavors in them? And I, I don't think he would, but that's okay. That's between you and Pastor Gary. I'm not in that, that loop, okay? Keep sending your comments and cards and letters to G about the M&Ms. But we, we need to understand that and we need to not be so critical of other things going on in other people's lives when you don't know their story. You don't know what's going on. You don't know if it's a conviction or not. I've told you before, alcohol is a favorite a choice of mine because I, I, I come from an alcoholic family generations of alcohol abuse. And so I hate it. I just hate it. And, and I know some of you out there listening to diet most likely uh, drink a alcohol as a beverage and, and you, you don't have a problem with it. If you drink in moderation, I cannot condemn that. I can't. The Bible does not allow me to do that. Now, I can give my testimony. I can weep as I'm sharing with you and tell you all the things that I've experienced in my life because my family drank. But I can't say the Bible says thou shalt not drink. So if I get hung up on that, there are churches and other people who say, we're just, I'm, if, I'm going to judge you on that particular issue that I consider a sin. Well, again, you can't find it in Scripture that, that God says you can't do it unless you're a Nazarite and you don't cut your hair either. That's the, that's the, the Nazarite vow. So you can't, I, I just can't say that to people. But I can judge that, you know, and when I get angry because I don't like it, I'll judge that particular thing. And when I judge that, this, that's what this scripture is leading to. Don't, don't judge those things when you've got other issues you need to deal with. Problem really is we sh the only person we should judge is the person in the mirror. We should literally carry a mirror with us whenever we see something we don't like and just look then at a mirror of ourselves and see what we don't like about that. And deal with that first. That's what this part about taking the plank out of our eye before we try to take the speck out of somebody else's eye because we just don't agree with it. Okay? It says, hypocrite. You hypocrite. You're, you're, you're judging others when you've got sin that is unjudged yourself. Uh, first, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. You know one another lesson that I've learned in my in my years here on planet Earth? When you remove when you start dealing with the sin in your own life, one of the things that you will see is how much sin you have in yours. It's hard then to complain about anybody else. It's kind of like uh, the Bible tells us to not to repay evil for evil, uh, but to pray for those who who say all manner of evil against us. 
to pray for them who persecute you, all those kinds of things. You know what? It's really hard to pray for somebody when you're mad at them. It's hard to pray bad prayers. And if you continue to pray, as the Bible says, if you'll pray day after day for that person that you're angry with, the problem is that you you it turns on you and you start dealing with this thing yourself and your own issues until all of a sudden, you can't really judge them anymore because you realize what a low-down scoundrel you are. So you have to really focus on yourself and it makes you fill your heart with more grace toward others because you know God's shown you grace in your life. Now, I'm not trying to say we should be easy on sin. We should not call out sin as a preacher and a pastor and a teacher. Part of my job is to say that this is a sin. This thing, whatever the thing is that we're dealing with in life, the stuff and circumstances in our culture. It's just some, some things are just sin. But we can't, number one, we can't dwell on that stuff. We have to also uh, preach the full counsel of, of Scripture, the bad and the good, the difficult and the more pleasant, all of those things together. And when there is sin in our life, Jesus talked about sin. He talked about this. But down um, uh, the, the, in that first passage, it's simply the, the uh, phrase I was, I was thinking about is we need to show some grace, okay? When you're, when you're dealing with somebody else's stuff, you need to show them some grace. And number two, you need to let God sort it out, okay? I'm not going to get into all these um, next um, next passages. I was going to jump down to chapter 7, verse 15 uh, through 20. And just reading verse 15, uh, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. He said, you, you, don't, you're, you don't have to judge people. The, the judgment is displayed in their lives. It's going to come out. You're going to see this. You're going to see if some person lives a life and they're always being critical of other folks and all that. You don't want to hear from them. You don't want to see them. You see their life and it's a mess. Uh, I, I had a person tell me recently that I was talking about marriage counseling and how difficult it is as a as a counselor, shepherd, pastor to help families in, in need. I said, the, the Bible has our answers but it's just, it's hard for people to take those answers and apply them to my life. And this guy said, well, he said, the, pre the problem, preacher, is you don't really understand how, how hard it really is. I've been married 40 years, okay? So I, I kind of do. I know what marriage is. And, I, and well, you know, your wife puts up with a lot. She does. My wife is just a, the most gracious woman ever. I mean, try to imagine being married to me. You all get me an hour a week and I drive you nuts. Imagine 160. 68 hours and she's still she's online with us tonight she'll listen to us so she puts up with me here some of it so she knows what she has to deal with when i get home but she puts up with me all the time so i understand we've had arguments through 40 years disagreements and and stuff we didn't see out of all that stuff this guy who said that to me I said, well i really do he said well he said i think it would help a lot of these couples he said i can, i think i could give them some some marriage counseling and I, we talked to him. i said what qualifies you he said i've been married four times I said, what? He said, I've been married four times. I said, well, so what you're saying is you can tell them everything not to do because obviously you are you don't really know what you're doing. Yeah, I do. I've been through it all. I know how to handle I said, but you're not in a good marriage. You know, he was current, he's currently not, not married at all. He's single now. And I said, I, I don't really understand your logic. I, I don't know that, that um, the best uh, teacher is somebody who's failed four times. And I don't know the circumstances. I don't know his story. I don't know what happened in each of those four marriages. I do know that he was the common do common denominator in all four of them uh, in their failures. So I, you know, I don't know his story, but I just think sometimes you can tell. So if I'm going to send somebody to marriage counseling, okay, somebody comes in as a preacher, I need to to talk to somebody about marriage. I've got some problems. This is going on, whatever. I don't want to talk to you though, preacher. Who do I go to? I'm going to say you need to go to Gary Smith because Gary's been married 40 years. And he's put up with Cindy for 40 years. Anybody that can put up with Cindy Smith for 40 years is a great man of God. He's got some counsel. I'm not sending that person to this dude who's been divorced four times. And now, Cindy, if you're watching, I hope you are. That was just a personal jab between you and I, and I, I, I love you, Cindy. Um, so anyway, do you understand the difference? He said you're going to be you're you're going to be known by the fruit in your life. You're going to be known by what what you have done, what's been born through your life and through your actions. 
So Jesus said, don't judge everybody else. You don't have to judge them. You don't have to measure them up. God is the judge. We'll all stand in judgment before him someday. We don't need to worry about this thing. He'll take care of that part. But what we can do, if you're, if you're saying, well, we're judging this person because we want to make them a deacon in our church, so we're going to judge them. No, you don't. You can, you can uh, let, let them bear fruit in their life and just watch their life. The Bible tells us when we're choosing deacons, for instance, said so don't choose a novice. Don't choose somebody who's just been a Christian for a short time. The reason for that, very simple. Watch their lives. After they were converted, did something happen? Did they change? Do you see the fruit in their life? Are they living a life that, that shows that they are, are worthy of this title and this servant position within the body of Christ? So that's, how, that's the difference in inspecting fruit, watching people, and judging them. When you're, when you're watching them, you say, well, they're, they're not measuring up to this. You're not judging them. You, you know they're not doing what God says according to His Word. You're not being critical of them. You're not trying to correct them. If you're discipling them, mentoring them, walk with them, then have the conversation. Ask the question. You know, I saw you do this the other day. Have you ever thought about what other people think about that? I, I've had to deal with those things in my own life. When, when I, I do something and somebody says, hey, pastor, you know, you said this and, and you, you're, you're always saying something cute and funny. And I, when I get in trouble, 95% of the time, it's over that. It's me saying something and, and it's saying something to somebody who I joke with all the time. I just saw Darren posted something there uh, earlier and Darren and I joke and cut up with each other all the time. David Choate and I. Um, a couple of guys with similar senses of humor to mine, which gets us all three in trouble at times. But we'll say something, and, and typically through the years when I've gotten in trouble, it's with somebody like that. Because I say some joke, and they're just having a bad day. They're just having a, a, a hard time right now. Maybe they're in a struggle in their life somewhere. And I say it's just the wrong day to say my little cutesy remark. They get offended, take it wrong, and they get their feelings hurt and won't talk to me for a month. And we men are as bad as women with that. We get our feelings hurt too and stop friendships and all that. I'm thankful that Darren and, and David and I, these the three Muska idiots. Um, no, I'm kidding. That just probably right there. That was the one. See, that's the kind of thing I say that gets me in trouble. But probably we're in good, good terms. We laugh about stuff like that. And I'm thankful that we can. And I just forget that everybody doesn't doesn't accept that, and at times it's a, it's an issue for us. But I've also watched their lives, and I can say to you, these are two godly men. These are two men, and we we do have this sense of humor. We all try to keep it in check, but there's times when each of us will say to the other, "Hey, you know, somebody probably didn't like that, didn't take that right." What? And I, I appreciate that. I think accountability can go through any of those relationships. Judge not, lest you be judged. For by the manner by which you judge others, you will be judged yourself. And by the same measurement you use, the same criticality, the same struggles, the same uh, anger, frustration, that's how other people are going to judge you. When you're not a judgmental pe person, people will come to you for counsel. They trust your counsel. They're more likely to listen to your counsel. That doesn't mean you can't have firm commitments and firm stands and all of those kinds of things. You absolutely should. My stand is on the Word of God every single time. It always is. And sometimes it's just hard. And people who don't even know me or know me uh, just casually or a little bit superficially, they'll say, well, preacher, we know where you stand, but I don't beat them up with it. I don't pound it down their throat. So it's, um, uh, it's, it's important for us to do that. Then the, the last passage there says, we'll be known by our fruits down the beginning of verse number 15, that little passage. In the Bible, uh, my, uh, and this is a, a Zondervan, yeah, Zondervan, uh, new, uh, uh, Zondervan NIV, an uh, older one. Uh, the, chapter 7 that begins with this first passage that I read with the subtitle, Judging Others, and some instructions. Then it comes down to verse 15, the verse that I just read, and it's, it simply says, A tree and its fruit. And it's about inspecting. And, and, and people who live good, wholesome, worthy lives, uh, it's, that's seen in their life. And you can, you can know that about people. You know who you love and who you want to um, uh, befriend, who you want to fellowship with. You know those folks uh, naturally and intimately. They just come into your life. Uh, and I've said before, a word, a term that I use is a joy sucker. You know who those people are in your life. And you dread you know, when, when your, the phone rings and you look and their name pops up. 
You just you dread it because you know it's going to be a struggle. You dread it when they come up to you. Uh, and, and I love when people say things like, now, Preacher, I, I love you, but I need to say this. Or, uh, uh, Preacher, uh, um, you, you know, I just want you to know uh, I, I, that I, I admire you. Here's my problem. Or it's, and they always kind of op- try to start it with a little bit of, to soften the blow a bit, but they're just coming to hammer you, you, you know. And so you know that, and they get a reputation of that. And next thing you know, if you're not careful, you avoid them at Walmart or Food City or wherever you find yourself. And as the body of Christ, we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to love one another, be compassionate, loving, caring about them, bearing their burdens and helping them. Um, so I would ask you right now, currently and in, in, on uh, July, what's today, the 8th? July the 8th, 2020, um, uh, be considerate toward other people. We want you to fill the church house up. We want you to come every Sunday and we're going to to do all we can to socially distance and protect you and all that. If you still don't feel safe in coming, then stay home and watch us on the internet. I love you and I'm thankful that we have that, that ability to do that. We're going to protect, we're going to encourage people to wear masks. I really do. I encourage you to do that. Uh, if you don't want to, I'm not going to beat you up with it and tell you that this is what the Lord says. Can't find that one either. So I'm not going to say it that way, but I, I think that it would probably help to keep this um, um, illness from spreading too much. And this past week, we've had some folks that are the real life cases. So far up to this point, up until the last week, I don't think I knew anyone personally. I knew of some people. I didn't know anyone personally until Daniel and Sarah, then Pastor Ernie and, and um, uh, his wife Angelia over at the Sixth Avenue Church of God. Um, uh, they're, they're, these are real people to me. Now, these are no longer names, statistics, numbers, no longer the, the, the possibles and probables and positives. And these are real live people that I care about. So it's real, and if I could keep them from um, um, getting that by me wearing a mask, then so be it. That's okay. I, I, like I said, I carry one. If, I, if I'm in a place where it's required or requested, I'll do it. Somebody just asked me to do it, I'll do it. I, I'm, I don't, it's not, I, I'm going to, I'll do all things for all people so that I might win a few of you. I just want people to hear the gospel, so I'm willing to do that, okay? So thank you for that. Judge not, lest you be judged. And in the end, the final result We're going to be known by our fruits anyway. We're judging ourselves as we go. Heavenly Father, I love you, and I thank you for your word, your truth, your your proof, your love. Thank you, God. Thank you. And I ask you, Lord, as we go into a time of prayer now, next few moments, that you will speak to our hearts clearly, that we will hear you and know you and, and understand how to respond to you, and we'll be faithful in all that we do. Bless us, Lord. Be with those around us that uh, are dealing with with issues. And and first and foremost, Lord, as we start our time of prayer, I know that the Pinkston family is on everyone's prayer list and on our hearts right now. We love Daniel and Jennifer, Claire, Sarah. uh, uh, We love Juliana, Rebecca, and Natalie. All of them. We love their parents and grandparents and everybody around. That's a precious family, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ who do things. Every time I go and visit my mom, uh, she'll, she has her cards there that she wants me to see from our new Providence family. And week after week, Jean Rankin and Carolyn Davis and Julie Alexander and the Pinkstons send my mom a card almost every week. Some others do sporadically, and I'm so thankful for all of that. But mom loves to open the, the she calls them her little flower girls, the Pinkston girls. She loves to open that envelope and get uh, five different pieces of art that those kids have drawn pictures and painted or colored or whatever. And they're, that's the kind of family this is. We love them, Lord. They they minister to others. What a sweet, sweet family. Right now, dealing with this uh, COVID-19 virus, their family is in a bit of a crisis, but I know that you're a God who is bigger than crisis. You're a God who is bigger than all of our situations and circumstances. So I ask you to put your hand of healing on their home, on each of their bodies, on their spirits and minds. Uh, remove the fatigue, the fever, the, the, the whatever the symptoms are, Lord. Just clear that virus out of their bodies, out of their homes, and help them, Lord, to, to uh, recover completely and totally. And Lord, that family is not more special to you than other families. It is simply a family that we know. It's not, Lord, I don't think they're more important than praying for some other families, but we're, that's just a family that we all know. And so that's the reason that we're praying for them specifically. But I ask you to do the same thing to other families and for others who are dealing with this virus. I just pray you'll put your hand of healing on them as well, on the churches that are being impacted and affected by it. 
Help us, Lord, as we are trying our best to uh, to, to uh, keep people safe in, in our church family and yet do as much as we can face-to-face. We need the fellowship. We need to be together. So we're trying to, to keep this, this disease from spreading within our church body and yet ministering to all the church body and trying to find the balance of that. Let not other churches judge us, other people out in the community judge us. Let them just mind their own business and may we mind our own business about other churches. Lord, that's a, I don't pastor some other church. Someone asked me recently, not too long ago uh, what I would do in this situation that they were describing at some church. I said, I don't know. I'm not the pastor there. And, and I, I mean that not being sarcastic or not being cute with my answer. Lord, but I, I don't know. you. I think you speak to me to lead this congregation, to do what, what I feel like you're telling me to do here. And I'm trying my best to do this. So help me, Lord, please. I'm begging you. Help me to do that. I want to honor you uh, with every step. So please, would you would you just keep our churches protected from this and, and let us continue to meet and gather and equip and engage the congregations and the entire church family that we might do what the church has been called to do, which is to carry the gospel to the world. Help us to do that. I love you and I thank you and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for that. That'll officially kick us off into our prayer time here. I've got a couple of prayer requests already on my list, and Deb just handed me some more. And they always give me these yellow pages. I like that because of that. Ooh, it's a green screen. You can't see behind me. It's just invisible. I don't know. I'm, I'm quite the mental case. Um, uh, let me share a couple more prayer requests with you and for you. Uh, first of all, I mentioned to you a moment ago, Ernie Varner and Angelia. Uh, uh, Angelia is a school teacher, worked with Kim when we first came here. Ernie's the pastor at Sixth Avenue Church of God, and my buddy and my friend. He is still in ICU, has been there a few days. I spoke with Angelia on the phone about an hour, well, now about two hours ago. Uh, spoke with her. She's just she's recovering, but coughing her way through it. Her children are also have also been diagnosed uh, with the COVID nineteen. Um, so they her her um, son, her daughter, and son in law, or son and daughter in law, uh, they they um, uh, have have this COVID nineteen as well. Ernie is they're all recovering at home. Uh, she's just basically now has a cough left over with hers. She's had it about uh, eight or ten days. Ernie is in the hospital. He is uh, in, in ICU. They have him in a medically induced um, uh, kind of coma, uh, pa- paralyzation, actually. I think he's conscious, but they're trying to get his O2 levels up. His body was, uh, he's intubated and uh, on a ventilator and that his body was was just tense and twitching and and so it just wasn't getting his oxygen level up according to Angelia this is straight from the family so they have him in a in a different kind of bed that actually allows them to to invert him and he's laying now face down uh, in in this bed trying to get the fluid off of his lungs he's developed pneumonia and so they're, they're, with the um, uh, oxygen being pumped in, they are getting his oxygen level has increased dramatically since they did that, which is a very good sign. But he is still far from out of the woods. It is very serious. Uh, so we ask you to continue to pray for the Varner family. And um, and I, I, I don't know. I don't think they're related to our Varners, uh, Brent and Haley. They, they might be. I'm not sure of that. I don't know that I've asked that question, but... Um, uh, they, they're they're a good family in our community, and we just want to lift them up. They have canceled their services uh, at least momentarily at Sixth Avenue Church of God, trying to deal with this um, and and praying for their pastor. I called again, asked if I could share all of this information tonight. They agreed to it, so that's why we're I'm sharing that here. Okay, so remember them in your prayer. Also, the East Hills Church had some. Uh, 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 active cases that tested positive this past uh, week or so. So I think that maybe they're not having services. I don't know the details of that. I tried to find out this afternoon and just couldn't get a, a sure answer. But I ask you to be with them. Their pastor uh, also was diagnosed with a, or tested positive with this COVID-19. So uh, it is affecting our churches. Uh, and we, we knew that that would happen. 
but I just want you to continue to pray for them. And while we're praying for them, I'm going to also pray for the Union Association of Churches in Kentucky and the Tehachi Church uh, uh, and the Wingate Church, both on the, the Navajo Reservation out in New Mexico with Pastor Aaron Jim and his son, um, who pastors the Wingate Church. So I want to lift them up in, in prayers because those churches have been affected as well. So uh, our churches in our community, and in particular, uh, um, uh, Angelia and, and Ernie Varner and the, the folks at East Hills Church. Okay, let me lead you in that one, then we'll go to a couple more. All right, let me pray. Father, uh, I come to you right now on behalf of my brother and friend, uh, uh, Ernie Varner. Lord, I come to you and ask you just to put your hands of healing on him right now. I ask for you to be with the doctors, the, the staff, the, the folks in the ICU, everybody involved to give the care that you prescribed. And, and Lord, for you to just put your hand of healing upon him, Miss Angelia, their children and, and in-laws, Lord, the, the family members that are affected by this. I pray you will help them to, to recover from this uh, fully and completely, that you will strengthen them and the Sixth Avenue Church family. Lord, as they, uh, in, in the next couple of weeks, she told me that for at least two weeks, they were not going to be meeting on campus. Uh, I don't know if they have online services or not, but, but Lord, I just know that, that it's a difficult thing when we're not being able to meet with our folks. We need one another. We need to, to speak to each other, to see each other. It, that's important for the church of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we want to do that, but we also want to be responsible and faithful. I pray for the East Hills Baptist Church and, and the pastor down there that you will help him. Lord, put your hand of healing on him. I imagine they won't have services the next couple of weeks either. Uh, so I ask you to help them through this time. Be with all the church to rally together to bless and minister to the pastor. I, I spoke to several leaders of our church this past week about our pastors and, and how they have not only tried to carry the banner and continue the work of the kingdom leading the church, but each of us have the same personal issues and situations that every other family does. I have a wife that I'm concerned with. My son was has tested for this COVID-19 because he was with the students last week when, when one of our students was, was found with, with COVID-19. So he's had to go and be tested, and now he's out of work. He's quarantined with my daughter and Grace and my three grandchildren. And I have to be considerate of that while I'm trying to lead the rest of the church. I have to think about ministering to my family. We had Kim's birthday this past uh, weekend, and her mom and dad came to my house, and Joseph and Tara couldn't come because they were afraid that Joseph might have been uh, might have, might have this. We, we haven't heard his test results back yet. So they were quarantined, so my family couldn't be together. So we were trying to find a way to minister to Joseph and Terry. So even though we pastors and shepherds are trying our best to, to coordinate cameras and make changes and work with ECAM and, and, and uh, computers and updates and upgrades and all of that stuff, that we're trying to make sure everyone gets to, gets to be part of the family of God and we get to touch them and know of their prayer requests and pray for them over and over. We still have our own lives to live as well. They're not separate. We can't just pull apart from that. So help us to understand all of the church. And thank you for this church loving me, loving me and, and our staff as we try our best to minister to this church, this community, and literally the world. Lord, we're trying our best to reach everybody. So help us to do that, please, is my prayer. And Father, one of the ways we're doing that is to engage people with buckets of blessings to send out to the, the uh, Navajo Reservation in New Mexico and uh, the, the two churches, Wingate and Tehachi. And Lord, we're trying to reach those folks and to help them. So we're packing these buckets to send. We've got 36 buckets sitting in the altar right now. We're, we still had some brought in today. We're, we'll, we'll receive them for another couple of days. We're not going to ship them out just yet. There may be some other folks who weren't able to bring them yet. So we're going to hold these, but ultimately we're going to do ministry to those, those churches. And I ask for your protection, for you to clear the, the, the corona virus from those folks out there. Uh, the, the, so many of the Navajo people have contracted the illness. I pray you'll help them and put your hand on them. So be with those families, please, Lord. I love you, and I thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord, and for carrying us through this day and all days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now we pray these prayers in your perfect name as well. Amen.
couple other requests for you. I just was coming back from, I went to grab a bite to eat before prayer meeting tonight, and I, I was driving down the road with my cell phone laying there on a conference or on a, a speaker phone call talking to my mom, and uh, somebody blew the horn beside of me, and I looked over, and it was Scott and Angie Palmer. And I thought, yo, man, I stuck my tongue out at him. And, and uh, did, then I texted Scott when I got back home and asked him how he was doing, how the family was doing. I want you to keep them in your prayers. The, the Case family, they were, up in, they were up in Chicago this week. Scott's brother-in-law, Steve, went home to be with the Lord. Uh, so the family is now dealing with that. And I ask you to pray especially for Miss Tammy, Steve's wife, who is now... Uh, there, her kids live up there, but um, then now her daughter's moved out, gotten married, and she's gone. And other kids are gone. Scott came back home. Miss Diane came back home. Now all of a sudden, that loneliness hits, and so she's going to really need our prayers and our support. She's a Christian lady, goes to church, attends the church, and there they will minister to her. But she's always she, she, they've planned vacations around our Bible school to bring the kids down here in years gone by. So uh, they're part of our family as well. So lift them up and Miss Diane and, and uh, Scott and Angie and the kids, all of them, keep them in your prayers. So that's the first one to remember the, the Case family. And then also uh, we got a message today from Miss uh, Rebecca Barber. She's uh, just put that, uh, she's added that message. There it is again uh, for you. Um, uh, we, it's possible that Faith has contracted the COVID-19. We don't know that. They've tested her, but uh, because of the situation and uh, being up there in basically this, this camp and training in the Navy, they've had to sequester her into a quarantine area herself. So she's uh, she's pretty miserable young lady. Been up there, was quarantined first couple of weeks when she got there, then went through boot camp and couldn't contact her mama and the family. Now they've quarantined her again on a ship uh, um, she, she's not able to be with anybody for for a while no no contact uh, I don't think they can still write letters or anything so uh, a mama's concern is that we pray for our little faith so I want you to do that we'll join and pray for faith Wiseman first of all she doesn't have the COVID-19 but I think this is going to set her training back some so that's going to reschedule and it's just the the way of the 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 world is right now. We're going to have to deal with some, many of these kinds of things into the future. But remember that family as you pray as well. So Faith Wiseman and the, uh, the Steve Case family. Then I got a couple more prayer requests. Yeah, um, and, and I can share this one. Did you ever get permission? Yeah. Uh, John Dutton, who is the music director, choir director, and show choir, all that, for the Philadelphia School. We love John. What a good guy he is. He brings the, the show choir here every year. By the way, they're on the calendar, I think, again this year. We'll see if that works. We'll, we're going, we'll see what happens when school starts back. But John, uh, we just got a message from, from somebody in the church family that his wife, Tracy, has just been diagnosed. They found a, 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 some a, maybe some brain tumors. They think they are benign, uh, but they're going to take her in for surgery, I think, to Vanderbilt. Is that? Yes, yeah, it is Vanderbilt. They're going to take her um, uh, next in the next week or so down to Vanderbilt on the 23rd of July. So um, we would ask you to pray for Miss Tracy in that surgery, the surgeons and the staff at Vanderbilt, but also for John. And, and he's such a huge part of the Philadelphia community and the school. I'm sure there'll be a lot of prayers for him, but what a good guy. I, I'm telling you, another good guy and Christian man who loves the Lord, trusts the Lord. And so we're going to pray for the Dutton family, Miss Tracy. And Miss Deb, I'm going to ask you to lead us in these three prayer requests. These, these are three very serious ones as well. And they all are. Don't take that wrong. But for the, um, the uh, Miss Faith Wiseman, the Case family, and then the Dutton family. And you, you got all those? And you remember? Can you share it? Okay. Pray for us, Miss Deb. Father God, thank you for today. And I just thank you for the opportunity lay our request at your feet, knowing that you have already taken care of them. Father, I thank you that you have walked hand in hand with the Case and Palmer family in these last couple weeks with the sickness with Steve, but also as he um, has gone on to be with you. Um, Father, you've been there to be a comfort to the family, and um, I just ask that you continue to do that with uh, the Palmers down here and, and with Tammy and the family up there. Father, I pray that um, 
that now the church and those that are around Tammy will just uh, step up a little bit more and, and be able to comfort her and, and be with her and help her not to um, to carry this burden alone. Hmm. Father, I thank you that you're, um, you have uh, your, your faithful servants around that will do such things as uh, come and just sit just sit with Tammy and just uh, let her know that she's not alone. I just ask that you continue to be with Diane and, and Scott um, down here and, and the rest of the Parma family and just um, help them, help them as well to, um, to weather through this and just continue to um, walk with you. Father, I thank you for um, Faith and for her willingness to step into um, the line of duty and, and step up and be in the military, Father, this is something she's always looked forward to. And I know this kind of sets her back a little bit, and it probably discourages her. But, Father, I pray for health, um, first and foremost for her, that she doesn't have the COVID. But if she does, I pray that it goes away quickly and that she's able to process and, and not have um, any residual effects or anything of that sort with it. I just pray for um, those that are around her, that it just doesn't spread rapidly and um, or anything that sort just to help them in this situation and help her to be able to get back to her training like she um, is so uh, desires to do and so Father I just pray that for her and Father for last I pray for the Dutton family I pray for John and for his wife Tracy um, Father um, I can't even imagine where they are right now but Father they are um, believers and they know and trust you and love you and so Father I know that you're you're there with them and that you're walking hand in hand with them and so Father I pray help them, um, help the doctors and the nurses and, and just the diagnosis and everything that has to come on from here. Um, and I just ask that, that you um, not leave anything undone and allow them to be able to um, come back home being confident knowing that the surgery worked and, and those kinds of things. Father, just help them. Um, and Father, I just pray for the Philadelphia family because John is such a, uh, a, a part of that family and I know that this um, will hurt them and so I just pray for them and ask them and ask that uh, you allow them to rally around John and his family and help them to weather this as they walk through um, this trial right now. Father, you're so good and I just know that you're with us and I just thank you and it's something I pray in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Deb. Appreciate those prayers. Then a couple more that were handed to me. Miss um, <clears throat> Cindy Bales, continue to pray for her in her recovery um, and uh, I imagine more tests coming in the days ahead and all that um, all the heart issues so we'll do that and you're very welcome Miss Cindy Miss Jan Gardner is Jan on was she on here tonight is she watching or was it from one of her family members Did you see that oh that was just Pastor Gary had that one on his list so remember her she has to have a, a pacemaker put in and I believe they said they weren't going to schedule that until August so it's not a real uh, emergency situation, but it's serious. So please keep Miss Jan Gardner in your prayers. Jan is not one of our members, but she is the grandmother of, of a bunch of our members, that Yancey family. She is Miss Kelly's mama and Angie uh, uh, Fritz's mom. So remember her in your prayers, if you will. Okay. And then Connie Whitson said, pray for Max uh, back injections and uh, for her family members that uh, work at hospitals and, and grocery stores, they have some, some family that is um, very much um, uh, in, on front line kind of thing. So we'll remember Connie's uh, prayer request for her family and for Brother Mac, Miss Jan Gardner, and Cindy Bales. Okay? All right, Pastor Gary, you want to pray for those three? Can you do that? He's, and he's back halfway across the room. We, we social distance in here, so um, he's got a holler. Um, so let him let him pray with us. Father, we just come to you at this time, ask you to cleanse and forgive us. Lord, we lift these folks up to you. You you know all the situation. Mr. Jan's been in the hospital, and Lord, uh, they found some heart problems there. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, be with the doctors and nurses and, and let them have your wisdom and let them see through your eyes. They know what needs to be done and when's the right time to take care of that. Miss Cindy Bales, Lord, she's been back in the hospital. They had to go back up north to the hospital again. And she's back home again. The Lord, she's still having problems. And, and Lord, I just pray that you would be with her and uh, also with her family and her, and her doctors as well. Lord, so they would know what needs to be done and what's the best avenue to take to take care of that problem or, or 
to relieve that situation and difficulties that she's having. Uh, Lord, uh, Miss Connie asked that we remember Brother Mac and his injections in his back. Lord, I, I can't I can't imagine what he's going through, Lord, because he likes to be busy. And Lord, this uh, kind of knocks his feet out from under him. And Lord, I, I pray you'd be with him and uh, to strengthen his back back up, to relieve the pain and help this to get him back on track where he wants to be. And then she has some family members that works in the hospitals and also in grocery stores, different places where, where folks just come in all the time, Lord, and, and um, all the time they're just going by, and Lord, we just need to be more careful than we have been ever before. And we, we lift these folks to, up to you, all of them that work in all those kind of situations and, and restaurants and fast food places, all those kind of things, Lord, that you would be with them and uh, with that edge of protection about them. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Gary. Then uh, just a couple more I've been handed. Um, Jay Witcher, I believe, is watching tonight. And he asked that we pray for uh, the uh, Miss Pam and her brother, Steve. Um, it's just been a rough week for them. And, and so um, uh, lots of stuff going on with tests and various treatments and all that. I did see on Facebook a few minutes ago, Miss Pam made some kind of cobbler look pretty good. And uh, I think, did, Gary, did you comment on that to remember how what, how what her recipe was when she gets back? So she'll make a that pretty cobbler. So she's uh, trying to minister to her brother. Pam, we're so proud of you. I know when my sister was so ill, I had to uh, invest a lot more time. I didn't have to move down with, with them, but I was with her every day, and it's hard. It's hard. I, I know that what you're dealing with, and so I, I thank you for being a woman of grace and character and dignity and, and showing uh, your family what it means to walk with Jesus, really, not just by word, but by your deeds, and you just keep ministering to Him as long as you need to and know we're going to continue to pray for you and according to the word of God, this too shall pass. And when it passes, my prayer for you, just me personally, I'm praying that you have no regrets, that you know you've done everything you can to be a woman of faith and a woman of grace, and you show your brother uh, the love of Jesus, okay? So thank you. That's just between you and I. Uh, then Bridget, um, um, let's see here. I pray for the, those that are dealing with um, anxiety. Uh, it is hard knowing people with, with COVID. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's an ongoing battle that, that Miss Bridget reminds us of and some others in our church. So we will keep that going uh, in our prayers as well. Anything else? Were there any more that we, or any that we missed? I think that's everything. So we're going to wrap this thing up. We'll pray for those two in just a moment. But before I do that, let me wrap up the announcements. Gary cut me off Sunday before I'd made any announcements on the internet. So I told him to stop that. Um, but he did it so he could get down to the front of the church and all that. And so uh, we're trying to, I'm trying to clone him, just make the, the clone better. Um, so, <laughs> and then Cindy, if we can, if the clone is better, we'll send the clone back to you, okay? But anyway, um, uh, <laughs> If you don't laugh, you'll just cry all the time. It's just not <laughs> worth it. Find something to laugh about. Kids, just find it. Um, <laughs> a couple of announcements. In New Providence Mighty Men of Prayer and Disinfectant. We invite you to join us this Saturday night at 8 o'clock to, uh, uh, again, clean the, the building, get it prepared for worship. The guys have gotten pretty good at that now with the, just a handful of guys. We clean everything in about... Uh, eight or ten minutes. They are quick with this. Cleaning the sanctuary for your bathrooms and back for your. Um, just really good at it, and I appreciate them so very much. But this week, we changed the time last week for 4th of July, but this week, guys, back to our 8 p.m. schedule. Pastor Gary will be um, back on, on Sunday night with a bowl of M&Ms or some kind of candy, teaching you a lesson how he got that out of that. I don't know. 
Uh, of course, the youth are, did not meet tonight here on campus. They will not meet next sun, next Wednesday night either. So we will make a determination after that, but we're giving it two weeks from last week's um, uh, case of uh, positive test. So we'll know that next week. Brother Charles will be getting in touch with everybody and telling you how he's going to uh, uh, get with the kids. He will get a message to them, whether it be a, a Zoom uh, meeting or something like that, in the next couple of days, okay? So uh, remember him in your prayers and the youth as well. Uh, don't forget your online tithes and offerings and, and mail that in or drop it by the church, any of those things. That was the announcement that Pastor Gary cut me off on last Sunday morning. So I wanted to double it here today. And I, I, I say it to you um, with, with confidence that you guys, you're probably tired of hearing me say that. But it, there are still just needs, uh, ongoing needs. And I appreciate you very much. You've been so very faithful. Thank you. We're not through this. I don't see the end in sight of of weird uh, adapting services, okay? So uh, we need you to stay faithful with your online giving as we continue to, to online preach. So we'll do our part if you will join us and, and do yours, okay? So help us with that. Um, don't forget to go to our Facebook Live event page and register for um, the, one of the two services this Sunday morning, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., if you will, please please uh, uh, tell us how many people will be coming to each of those services. Two weeks ago, we were very near capacity in both services. This past week, I think because of the positive tests, um, folks were a little bit, uh, some folks stayed home in, in case they were had been subjected. So um, crowds were down this past Sunday for the first time since we started this. So I'm expecting them to, to be back uh, closer to, to what we've been having this coming Sunday. But we need you to go online and sign up if you will. Our Facebook Live worship will be um, uh, uh, televised or, or on the internet during our 11 a.m. service. Mask ministry still continuing to go well. Somebody brought in another bag this past week, but I'm just I'm continuing to ask for them. We need more. Just keep keep them coming. Uh, and there's going to be more issues, as I've told you before. And everybody, if you don't have a mask yet, I would encourage you to pick one up when you come here, even if you don't wear it here. But if you go for groceries at Kroger, you have to wear a mask now if you go in Knox County. So I would encourage you to get a mask here. That's why we made them so you don't have to buy them. And the, these are as good a quality as those boxes full of them at Walmart uh, that are running about a buck a piece. You can pick up free mask or masks for your family. So uh, mask people, keep making them. Everybody, they're available for you here if you need them. Uh, the, the, the buckets of blessings, as I said, we're not going to ship them tomorrow. That was the original plan, but we've still had some folks trickling some in. So it'll be a couple more days before we send those buckets of blessings. So if you haven't brought yours, you are welcome to do that. You can just set it on the on the front porch uh, of the church and we will uh, retrieve it from there and bring it into the building. Then uh, I'm still praying and I, I'm, I'm still asking God to give us clarity on this. But my goal is still to be back in the, in the Sunday night services the first Sunday of August. And we'd like to kick that off with the last Sunday night in July with an outdoor uh, fellowship, testimonial, maybe some singing, no preaching, but have that service. Uh, Gary's fighting me over this, and so just so you know, our staff meetings are never pleasant. We're always arguing about things, but we prayerfully come to a, to a decision before it's all said and done. We, I, we're not going to put anybody at risk any more than we do every time we gather. But we're, gonna, we're trying to figure a way that we can still socially distance outside. My goal is to have a Sunday night picnic dinner on the grounds that you don't share. <laughs> so every family bring a bring a sack lunch or a cooler and and uh, and your family just bring a blanket and you sit in your group and we'll have 25 groups around there socially distancing but just and and there's I grew up and my family wasn't spiritual we didn't do a lot of things but the the best memories of my childhood were always around a table we, that was just when my family, and I think there's a value to that. I like my family to sit at a table. Kim and I will often just sit on the recliner and eat, lunch, eat supper watching television. But there's something good about just being able to gather together. So we don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off or not. I'm not sure. But that's our goal. That's my goal. And then have us back here on Sunday nights. 
uh, and, and I've got a special plan for that as well. We're going to be introducing rolling out just very soon. Uh, that also is when schools are they're scheduled to begin first week of August in, in Loudoun County. So we'll see what happens when that happens. If there's a sudden spike or surge in the COVID-19 uh, uh, positive test as well. Here's something peculiar for you. Uh, and we'll just to finish that, bring you, bring a camp chair, a lawn chair of some sort, and a cooler full of food. I'm going to ask Pastor Gary to get some games together that we can play, probably shouting at us games. Yes, Gary, that's what we're going to do. And then right now, you're making me angry. You're making me say we're going to do it. So I want to be spiritual in this. We're going to we'll have some games and activities and all that. Just bring a chair, sit around in, in your family groups. And we're going to have some time together yelling at each other and, and all that. I don't know, family feud or something, okay? So anyway, we're going to do that, and uh, we'll see um, what, what else we can do. But let me give you something peculiar. Joseph told me that he was he was going to um, uh, uh, get a test result done. Somebody told me today that they had taken a, a test, a COVID-19 test, back in June, June 28th, 11 days ago, and they got the test results today. Okay, so they got the results today and the person was positive. But then you get this test result. When you say that, you can't go anywhere, do anything until you quarantine 14 days. But they were tested 11 days ago. So probably it's already out of their system. They're going to go and have another test done to see if they're negative. But if it takes another 11 days, it's in essence three weeks from the time you get tested to the time you can get freed up. Joseph, because he was around the, the youth meeting last week, had to go, he called his boss, being responsible, told him he had been around somebody. His boss said, can't come back until you get a negative test. So he said, okay, and we, he's not been tested, uh, he's not been, doesn't have a positive test, but he got his test done yeah, maybe yesterday, Monday or yesterday, and the, they told him it'd be 10 days. So he's going to be at home, uh, can't go back to work for nearly two weeks if, if he doesn't, if, even if it's a negative test. So uh, just craziest things ever. And, and now they're, they're supposedly I heard today that the health departments and doctor's offices are almost all out of the quick tests. They're saving those for medical people, doctors and first responder kind of folks. So the regular people like you and I can't get them. So all that's going on and just uh, on top of everything else as if it's not hard enough and, and scary enough when you get that stuff. So anyway, that's just need to keep that in mind as you're praying for people. Again, be patient. Don't judge people. Don't be mad. It is what it is. We just need to trust the Lord uh, every day. Okay. With any other announcements I need to make, guys? Y'all good? Good? All right. Very good. Thank you for that. Let me pray for these two, the Witcher family and uh, those folks in our community with anxieties and stresses over that, as well as for just uh, our culture, okay? Let me pray. Father, I come to you finally, Lord, closing the service out tonight, but asking you to, to be with these in need. I, I pray first for Miss Bridget's request. People who, who emotionally and mentally uh, are anxious about this, and it is so real, Lord. Those, those issues in their hearts and minds are absolutely real. Some people can handle stress and just not even bat an eye, and some folks crawl under the table, and other, lots of other folks, folks are somewhere in between. And I can't fix any of them. I can't change any of them. I can't do anything except love them right where they are. And I believe that that is exactly what your word teaches us. We should love everybody right where they are and love them so much that we don't want them to stay where they are, but to move closer to Jesus. But we've got to love them there. We don't drag them closer to Jesus and then get them fixed. Lord, we love them and let you touch their hearts and lives and draw them close. So I pray for those folks with anxieties and, and, and um, uh, the people that, that have an, uh, anxious moments in crowds and all that. Lord, just bring peace. Peace that passes all understanding. The peace of God. Let it settle on each of the hearts of those people. And I think, honestly, Lord, all of us have some level of that. And so we all need that, that very presence. Be with us. And then, Lord, I ask you to be with my friends, uh, Jay and Pam Witcher. I thank you for Jay holding down the fort here in Loudoun, Tennessee, while his wife is away in Louisiana ministering to her brother. I thank you. It shows great character in my brother, Jay, uh, showing that he understands that I know he misses his wife and wants her here and wants to hold her hand and sit on the couch. I get it. But he also understands that there are things that are bigger than us. So he's willing to sacrifice his own comfort 
and his own bride for a few days or weeks to let her do the work of the kingdom. So thank you for his integrity. Thank you for Pam's willingness to sacrifice and to go there and to love her brother and her family. Please give them peace. Help them through this time, Lord, and just bring them comfort through it all and help them to, to honor you and walk with you. Uh, Lord, and when I'm praying for her, I think about my friend uh, Julie Alexander and her mom. She asks us every week to pray for Miss Penny, so we continue to do that. Ask you to be with her in her time of quarantine, separated, alone, not have other people in her life close by. So be with her and Lord, uh, speak to her heart so that she might have a, a, a change in her spirit that she knows that you love her and you're going to rescue her. Help her. Father, I ask you to, to use this time to train up the New Providence Baptist Church family. I pray that we will understand and know how to be better uh, uh, gospel witnesses to the world, that more people will be saved than ever before. Tune our hearts. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but happy is he that keepeth the law. Those of us who study your word and see what you're saying and do what you tell us to do, I believe we'll be joyous because uh, uh, I think that there is joy in the life of a soul winner. I think when we see people saved, it just brings us. So we can see that if we'll be focused on people's eternity and those spiritual things in our lives. So let us do that, Lord. Be with our missionaries serving around the world, especially those in New Mexico, those in, in Guatemala and Honduras, Romania, Ghana, uh, Israel, Germany, those places that we go, northern Kentucky, uh, the, the folks up there in that association, all around us, Lord, the people who are serving all in those fields, be with them, carry them, help them. And Lord, I pray for the Spirit of God to move mightily through our Facebook uh, services and through other messages, Sunday school lessons, and all of that to touch the lives of people who need to hear about Jesus. Lord, let us be found faithful. I love you. I thank you for this night. I thank you for the laughter. I thank you for the, the, the uh, seriousness at times. I thank you for being able to distinguish between the two. Help us, Lord, to glorify you with both, with all of our life. Help us to do that. Thank you for our staff that is so faithfully leading. Bless them tonight. Keep them in your hands and care. Watch over us is our prayer. In Jesus' perfect name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. We love you. Thank you for being with us tonight. I hope you have a great week. Look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Be sure and reserve your seat. See you Sunday morning. God's blessings upon you.